Assalamualaikum alaykum my bai Johns and my bae Johns. Uh, I just want to ask how are my Urdu doing tonight? Uh, but let's switch back to English uh, and say what's going on to everybody and I hope you guys are having a beautiful night. If it's night time, hope you're having a beautiful morning if it's morning time and hope you're having a beautiful day if it's daytime on your end. Today is Wednesday, so that means hashtag guarantee is on. So. Uh, forget Iran versus Spain game and come watch hashtag LNT. Although it's hard, uh, I, I just heard in my earpiece that they got a penalty shot. So, you know, if, if they tie up, they'll go up. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll leave that to the side. But tonight's episode is about a serious crime that has occurred almost a century ago. Yet the world has barely any, any information on that topic and on that serious, very serious crime. But... Hashtag LNT chose to talk about it tonight. What crime are we talking about? You'll get to know, but after what's trending in a few seconds. Welcome back, dear viewers. The guys were, the guys were uh, joking with me. There's no penalty shot. It's still 1-0 for Spain. Uh, that's for what's trending. But no, uh, what's trending for tonight? Very serious. Now, the U.S. Trump administration has pledged to withdraw from the UN Human Rights Council uh, on Tuesday because uh, it accused it, uh, it accused the council of uh, hypocrisy and bias against Israel. Now, the uh, American ambassador to the UN, uh, she mentioned, uh, for too long a human rights council has been a protector of human rights abusers and a uh, cesspool of political bias, uh, Nikki Haley. Uh, ambassador, uh, American ambassador to the UN. Uh, she also mentioned uh, that uh, she also mentioned uh, that uh, the UN committee does not allow us to remain uh, a part of a hypocritical and self-serving organization that makes a mockery of human rights. Now, this is against one uh, or the only organization serving human rights out there, and the most prominent one uh, out there. Uh, and the uh, Trump administration is attacking it. I don't know what else is, who else hasn't the, the, the Trump administration attacked? Uh, but we'll get to see what will go on. But whoever is watching the World Cup, they're probably watching it right now. Uh, you know, split screen, hashtag LNT on one side, the World Cup on the other side, Iran versus Spain. But uh, if you guys are watching, no Arab country is making it into uh, the top 16. Uh, you know, all of them were disqualified except for Tunisia, and it's not looking too promising for them because uh, their next game is against Belgium. Uh, and, uh, you know, they lost against England. They're probably going to lose against uh, Belgium. Although, you know, they say soccer is a, is, is a, is a game of miracles, as uh, the Japanese uh, coach said uh, when, you know, b before the game with Colombia. He said, if we win on Colombia, if we beat Colombia, it's going to be a small miracle, which they did. They beat Colombia. Uh, but you know what? That's it for what's trending. Let's go jump in to see what tonight's topic is all about. Once again, we do welcome everybody for joining us tonight. Uh, episode 62 of hashtag LNT. MashaAllah, knock on wood. 62 episodes of hashtag LNT that has come your way. Tonight, we're trying to talk about something very important. Now, we, could, we can all agree uh, that one of the most essential and respected manners for every denomination of every religion, of all religions, uh, is heritage. I mean, heritage is what belongs to the culture of a particular society that was created uh, in the past and still has historical importance. Notice the words or the term I use, belongs. Now, what do I mean by that? If something belongs to a culture of a particular society, then it must be preserved as it's the, an exceptional element that matters the most to that specific group or that defines that group. Now, suppose that respected heritage is destroyed. Then what happens? Then the perpetrator has committed a serious and a huge crime, a heinous crime against every single follower of that specific group, that religion, or that denomination, that entire group. Um, 
that follows that denomination or religion. Now today, my dear viewers, uh, we are trying to uh, commemorate an early commemoration uh, of what's on Friday. Friday uh, marks uh, the International Day, the 8th of Shawwal, um, uh, marks the demolition of al baqiyah the tragedy, the crime that affects every Muslim every year on the 8th of Shawwal. However, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, the world is yet to know what Baqiyah is, what has actually happened on that day, and what's going on and how people are raising awareness. Not everyone is shedding light on it. So that's why we chose tonight to talk about it. But the question for you guys that we chose for tonight is, Baqiyah demolition, are you raising awareness? Very simple question. How are you raising awareness? You can tell us by participating at the number shown right now. Plus 964-774-067-1836. That's 006-964-774-067-1836. You can call us during the live show via WhatsApp. You can send us a text message. You can send us a voice message. We're also live on Facebook, so you guys can go check us out there. Comment uh, and let us know what you guys think and what you guys how are you guys raising awareness on Baqiyah demolition or on this specific day 8th of Shawwal what are you guys doing do let us know but we'll take a very quick break and come back to talk more of tonight's topic Welcome back, dear viewers. Hope everyone is enjoying their night. Now, tonight, uh, as we mentioned, we are live from the holy city of Karbala. And it's a beautiful uh, Wednesday night here in the blessed city. Uh, and, uh, you know, coming to you live, Ahmed Ali, hashtag LNT, the late night talk, coming your way. Uh, now, uh, we, all, we all know that people are watching the game right now, but hopefully, uh, you know, they can tune in and learn about International Baqiyah Day. And the question for you guys, Baqiyah demolition, are you raising uh, awareness? The question is right there below, and the number is below it. So all you got to do is pick up the phone, open WhatsApp, dial the number, give us a call, shoot us a text message, uh, give, send us a, 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 a voice message via WhatsApp, and let us know what you guys think. You can also comment on our live uh, Facebook feed. We are live on there as well, so you guys go check it out uh, as well. Now, for those who haven't heard of Baqiyah, uh, let's take a step back and go to check out and go to learn and talk about what Baqiyah is all about and what's the story behind it. Now, Al Baqiyah is a cemetery located in Medina. And uh, if you don't know where Medina is, uh, I don't know what, uh, under what rock you live in, but it's in, it's in Saudi Arabia. Um, you guys should all know that by now. Uh, now, it's, it's named Baqiyah. The name Baqiyah means a tree garden. Now, it also has another nickname, another uh, title called Jannat al baqiyah the, the heaven of the tree garden, due to its sanctity. Now, since many of uh, Prophet Muhammad's uh, sons, grandsons, um, companions, and relatives are buried there, that's where the sanctity uh, comes from. Now, the first companion ever to be buried in that place, in that cemetery, was Uthman ibn Mad'un, who, uh, who died... Uh, on the third of uh, Sha'ban, in the third year uh, of Hijrah, in the third year after Hijrah. Now, just a quick info to throw. A lot of people question, you know, Uthman ibn Mab'un. A lot of people question that Imam Ali named one of his sons Uthman. And uh, they say that, you know, due to Imam Ali's love uh, to Uthman ibn Affan, uh, we're not trying to raise any sectarian information, but, you know, we're, we're, we're sharing information that needs to be shared. Uh, it's, it's not due to his love to Uthman ibn Affan who actually fought Amir al-Mu'mineen uh, but uh, he named his son Uthman because of this very loyal companion Uthman ibn Mar'un um, so just to clear up uh, some of the misconceptions revolving around the name of the son of Imam Ali ibn Talib um, anyways now the Prophet ordered certain trees to be cut down uh, and in the middle to be buried whoever dies from the Muslims be buried uh, in that uh, cemetery, placing two stones over Uthman ibn Mar'un's uh, grave. Now, on the following years, the Prophet's son Ibrahim, 
if you don't know the Prophet had sons, he actually did have sons and several sons. Um, one of his sons was Ibrahim who died in infancy. He's also buried in that cemetery as well. The people of Medina after that began to bury uh, all of their deceased, everyone that, that died from the Muslims in Medina, they would go bury them in Baqiyah. And the Prophet mentioned something very important. And he gave a very uh, nice dua uh, and a blessings to those uh, to those people who are buried in Baqiyah. He said, Peace be upon you, O haven of the faithful. God willing, we should soon join you. O Allah, forgive the dwellers of Baqiyah. So this is a prayer that Prophet Muhammad used to pray whenever someone is buried in Baqiyah. So the sanctity of Baqiyah also comes from the dua that Prophet Muhammad or from the prayer that Prophet Muhammad um, uh, prayed uh, to those individuals. Now, the site of Baqiyah, the cemetery, gradually extended. It got a lot bigger. People began to bury Muslims when, when they died in the battle, when they died uh, out of you know, old age, out of anything. Um, they went and buried uh, their deceased in, uh, the, in, in that cemetery. But we do remind everyone to call in as we just received a text message from Sajjad from the UK. I have participated in several uh, protests. Thank you very much. Let's get that back on. Let's get that back on. But uh, until then, uh, we'll just... Uh, all right. Is there technical issues? All right, so that it's back on. Sajjad from the UK says, I have participated in several uh, protests again uh, against Al Saud uh, here in the UK calling for the uh, reconstruction of Gentle Baqiya. We hope that the world listens to us and does something uh, about it. Thank you very much, uh, Sajjad from the UK. And, applaud, and I applaud you uh, for, for what you have uh, been doing uh, to raise awareness uh, to those individuals and to r raise awareness uh, for Jannat al uh, Now, uh, going back to what we were saying before, now uh, as I mentioned, Jannat al gradually extended and it got a lot bigger. Nearly 7,000 companions of Prophet Muhammad were buried in that cemetery, no or not. So it's not just a, a, specific, um, uh, a specific cemetery for a specific Islamic denomination. Now, according to many historical books, whether Sunni or Shia, and mostly Sunni, they focus a lot on companions. Now, if you do focus a lot on companions, almost 7,000 companions are buried in that cemetery, which we'll talk about who destroyed it. Now, not to also mention, and not to forget to mention at the same time, that Imam al-Hasan was also buried there. Uh, Imam Zain al Abidin, the son of Imam al Hussein, was buried there. Imam al Baqir was buried there. Imam al Sadiq was also buried there. And let's not forget the mother of the four sons, Umm al Banin, is also buried in Jannat al Baqiyah. Now, this holy land became a heritage for all Muslims, not just for Shia, and not because the Imams are buried there. 7,000 companions, along with the Prophet's relatives and wives, are buried in that. Now the, the, the world, um, it, it's, it's still being, uh, it, it remained as one of the most important heritage within Islamic culture and to the Muslims. And everything was going well and, until 1806, in the, the beginning of the 18th century AD. Now what was going on and what happened? During the house of Saudi's 19th century control over Mecca and Medina, they demolished mosques, they demolished sites, they demolished graves, they looted areas, they demolished a lot of religious buildings and historical landmarks where they took anything precious within that as a decoration for their homes. So it's like a spoil for war. They took it from mosques, landmarks, um, manuscripts were burned and so on and so forth they raised everything to the ground and everything was robbed from from those religious places and then 
they turned to Jannat al-Baqiyya because that wasn't an exception. They also raised that to the ground and demolished everything that remained or that stood in Jannat al-Baqiyya. Now, it was later rebuilt by the Ottoman Empire uh, under the rule of Sultans Abdul Majid, uh, Abdul Hamid, uh, Abdul Majid I, Abdul Hamid II, and Mahmoud II uh, as well. But later on, we see a new group. We don't want to use foul terminology, uh, but just to keep it within Islamic boundaries, uh, we'll just say uh, Rad al Haram, uh, the sons of the unlawful. Uh, you guys know what I'm saying because uh, as what we'll get to talk about later on uh, you'll get to know how much amnesty and how much hatred they have towards uh, animosity towards uh, such a religious heritage uh, within Islam really affects every Muslim as I mentioned later on but the Wahhabis when they came in and they brought us out to power they did one thing they also they brought back the demolition of religious sites after the ottoman empire raised gentle baqiyah when the wahhabis came in they went back and they demolished gentle baqiyah when the house of al saud got or regained their power um, in mecca and medina uh, in 1925 Abdul Aziz ibn Abdul Rahman ibn Faisal al Saud, aka Ibn Saud, this guy right there, this, uh, what should we call him? This, uh, you know, they just uh, make it full so the guys can get scared. Whoever's watching us can get scared. This devil, yeah, actually, he looks like he has two horns uh, coming out of his head, subhanAllah. And subhanAllah, if you realize every person coming from Al Saud is either blind or his eyes are going the wrong way like they're not balanced properly we're not trying to make fun of uh, you know God's creation but that's not God's creation bro that's the devil's creation but anyways uh, now when when they got in power when they regained power in, in April uh, 21st uh, or they got they regained power before but on April 21st 1925 they went back to Baqiya and they demolished it to the ground they broke it down and now no one is there to rebuild it we'll get to talk about it later but let's take this uh, text message we just got from Fatima from Sweden she says I think we should uh, contact the United Nations directly a delegation has to go straight to their headquarters in New York and tell them everything while showing them the evidences um, very nice idea very beautiful idea uh, Fatima from Sweden thank you very much for joining us uh, tonight uh, yes, that was your idea. Thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, tonight. Now, uh, the demolition uh, included destroying even the simplest, this is the translation, even the simplest of the gravestones. So even a small grave that indicated, and I repeat again, almost 7,000 companions. If you guys are worrying about, you know what, I'm coming from a Shia perspective, which I should, but let's put Shiism to the side for a sec, and let's bring it from a Islamic perspective, where everyone respects the companions, right? Or do we respect some of the companions? I don't know. But coming from a, a general Islamic perspective, almost 7,000 companions are buried in that cemetery and they destroyed every single small stone sitting on a grave. They took it out, they dug it, they, they, they demolished everything. Now let's see a before and after picture of what, what, what al Baqiya looked like and what does it look like today. So this is what it looked like before. Let's full screen that so they can see uh, what it actually looked like before. See that's Gentle Baqiya right there where the Imams are buried, the big shrine. But look at the graves. Look how many graves are in Gentle Baqiya or were in Gentle Baqiya. It's huge. Just 7,000 companions, not including the relatives, the wives, the sons, the, the grandsons of Prophet Muhammad and, and the Muslims that were buried there. Let's look at it now. This is, not this is, but 
that's me. But that's what it looks like right now. Let's full screen that. Let, let's full screen that. Empty piece of land. Empty piece of land. Nothing. Desert. Desert. That's it. Is that what Muslim heritage should look like? Is that what 7,000 companions of Prophet Muhammad should look like? Now, that's embarrassing for all Muslims not to talk about it and not to raise awareness on the 8th of Shawwal. Because it really, it, it disgusts me that individuals like the government of Al Saud are, are you know, demolishing Muslim heritage while Muslims are not following up with it and not really um, you know, understanding what happened and not knowing what happened. You're Muslim, you should know what happened to your heritage. But let's ask the expert about tonight's topic uh, and what he has to say. Joining us, Mustafa Akwan, Mr. Mustafa Akwan, uh, founder and head of the Shia Rights Watch, joining us tonight. <laughs> Thank you very much for uh, Imam Hussein TV for covering such a uh, huge topic. Uh, uh, first of all, I apologize for my clothes because I don't have a proper clothes because I've been on the road for covering different topics. But because the uh, topic of Baqi is very important to me and my organization, we are trying to uh, raise the awareness and working with the different groups in regarding that. Uh, Shia Rice Watch is working with the Baqi Foundation, which is internationally uh, working on this subject of rebuilding the Baqi, uh, raising the awareness and creating such a import, uh, such a documentation that can be presented to the different countries. Uh, there are so many things that the people can know and can understand and can work on. One is that the topic of the Baqi needs a lot of awareness to the Shia Muslims and the uh, people of other faith. Unfortunately, there are many Shias who don't know exactly where is Baqi, who is buried there, uh, and what they can do. And the international community is the same thing. So we are working on that regard with the Shia Rice Watch, with the Baqi Foundation. At the same time, there are a lot of campaigns going on. There are a lot of things that the people can do. It's not only about uh, participating in the restrictions, participating in front of the uh, Saudi embassy. There are, if they are writers, they can write about it. If the, uh, everyone is using the social media, they can uh, follow the hashtag that is going on for the rebuilding the Baqi and working on that regard. Uh, there are people who are, uh, can either financially or educationally work in that regard. They can do research, they can do uh, articles. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we have very educated people in our communities that they have this awareness, they have this knowledge, they can put that knowledge in the good use. For us, it's uh, very important to know that the Baqi and the rebuilding Baqi is not only for that place, is not for only, only for that Baqi, is for the demolition of the other religious sites that the terrorist groups are uh, aiming or have done uh, in, in the past. We have the demolitions in the religious sites in Syria, in Iraq, that need awareness. These are the steps that we are taking to, to introduce that to the international committee and working with that. Uh, it is our job to work not as an uh, organization, as a, as a people with a faith, faith uh, to uh, raise this awareness, work with this uh, different organization, work with a different TV station, work with a different media to raise this awareness and create a, such an environment that the people agree and be able to understand us. Because there are a lot of things, there are a lot of issues is that there is no lack of understanding, lack of why people are trying to uh, rebuild the Baqi, why they are uh, have a more on, on the uh, situation like uh, religious sites. A lot of people, they don't understand it. They don't know the subject. They don't know why we are doing this. So for us to be able to introduce that, to, for us to be able to work in that subject is very important. And a TV station like Imam Hussein that is doing very good job on, uh, regarding that awareness and the other awareness is the platform that they can use or the Shia Rice Watch or Baqi Foundation. They can use and, and work with those organizations. And there are so many, uh, other organizations as well, so many organizations who are working that subject. But the, specifically on the Shia situation, Shia Rice Watch is taking the lead, Baqi Foundation taking the lead on the uh, 
uh, rebuilding the Bari. These are the organization who have that this is their specialty. They are working on that. They can contact us and see what they can do in that regard. At the same time, uh, work with the different social media, work with the uh, uh, media, work with the uh, news agencies to raise this awareness. Every single thing that we do can be helpful for uh, promoting our faith, promoting our, our uh, religion, and at the same time, making other people to understand we are oppressed and we need to be, uh, our issue need to be highlighted and they have to work on that. <laughs>
a century ago, which still exists today. You know, a crime might exist and might pass through history, but this still exists today, where thousands of Muslims, millions of Muslims, go to Medina and they're not allowed to visit these graves. Over 7,000 individuals, 7,000 Muslims buried in that cemetery where millions of Muslims are not allowed to recite the simple Fatha near their graves. Let's get together and raise awareness and call for the rebuild of Jannat al baqiyah the heaven of al baqiyah Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us tonight. Do stay tuned for the upcoming episodes at 10.30 a.m. Sorry, 10.30 p.m. Karbala time. Uh, every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, 10.30 p.m. Karbala time. This is Ahmed Ali coming to you live once again. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.